So you performed your experiment and have collected all of your data. So now what? Are we done? Almost. I have many experimental groups here, but keep in mind that in an experiment, you only need at least one control group and one experimental group. Looking at the numbers like we have here can be a bit overwhelming. Is there a better way to visualize this data? Well, yeah. All we need to do is display it better. This is where graphs, tables, and charts come in handy. Now, many students may groan at the thought of making a graph. What kind of graph do I use? A line, a bar, a pie chart? What data do I use? Where does it go? Don't worry, all of this is very, very easy. First, we need to figure out what graph we should make. For the most part, line graphs are useful when we track changes over a period of time. Bar graphs are good for comparing things between different groups. And pie charts, well, they let us see parts of a whole. Our experiment deals with cups of coffee and test scores. So there are different groups here, zero cups all the way up to four. Based on this, I think a bar graph would work pretty good. Next, we need to figure out where our independent and dependent variables go on this graph. Here's the general rule. The dependent variable goes on the side here, the y-axis, and what we change, the independent variable goes down here on the x-axis. Don't forget to include the units for each and title your graph. Okay, now for our increments. Let's start with the x-axis first. I gave my volunteers two tests. One before they drank their coffee, and then after they drank their coffee. My control group just took two tests without drinking any coffee. Okay, well let's put that down. I have five main groups, a control and all four experimentals. Within each group, I gave them a before and after quiz. Okay, I'll make room for that down here for the five sections each consisting of two bars of information. I'll even put a little key here to highlight the different quizzes. My y-axis is easy. All I am jotting down is a range of quiz scores. Always start with zero. My highest score was almost 100, so I'll use this as my last value here. And done. Now we're ready to plot our info. All right, we're done. Now all we have to do is interpret it. Making your graph should be much easier now that you have identified the layout and graph type. It's just a matter of getting some graph paper, a ruler, yes, a ruler, please use a ruler and a pencil. But if you want to use a website to help you construct one, you're in luck. The National Center for Education Statistics has a wonderful, free, student-friendly graphing feature that lets you easily plot the type of graph you want, plot your data, label everything, and instantly see how it looks. A link to this website can be found in the description section of this video below.